Okay, so welcome back to the channel and today we're checking out Immortal Planet on the Switch. This Souls-like isometric title has some big promises. We've got Souls-like progression, tight level design with single checkpoints to, you know, really ramp that difficulty. And then, of course, the expected huge boss fight. But does this one do enough to earn a spot on your Switch? Or has this indie Souls-like maybe aimed just a little too high and missed the mark? Hit subscribe, join the family. We appreciate every one of you. Hit that like button if this video helps you out and let us know your thoughts in the comments below. With that, let's get this started. Okay, so for setup, I've got to say it's pretty cool. You're known as an awake walker, an immortal who awoke from cryosleep and wonders a planet. This planet, though, it's less than homely, that's for sure. It's an icy, barren wasteland, essentially, where immortals rest in tombs in that cryosleep state. To make matters worse, though, through these tombs, you're going to be encountering what's known as sleepless warriors. They've basically gone mad from being alone for so long, just wandering these halls, and they're pretty much all out to obviously kill you because this is a souls like. It's the age old, though, you've lost your memory, oh no, so try and work out what's going on and your own history. In true soul style, the story is relatively simple, but it piqued my curiosity. It did enough to send me on my desperate battle for answers, that's for sure. Okay, so when it comes to graphics, they've really created a unique look here, I'll give them that. First of all, the isometric viewpoint it actually really works for the genre, but it also gives us like a nice open view of the world around us. Nothing can get us by surprise, which is a nice addition. Graphically then, character design, it's very stylistic and it's clear they set the tone of this universe almost immediately. They're almost like cell shaded, they're like low detail, but I really liked our hero and enemy designs here. We also then get some really stylized animations here too, from attacks, dust from footsteps, blurred our characters' movements. It just all feels very refined and they've done a really great job. When it comes to complaints, I will say by the end game, that kind of like 8 to 10 hour mark, it all starts to feel a little repetitive graphically. And that's mainly down to what I would say is the locations. They've added some slightly different you know, colors and factors but it's very hard to mask an isometric playing field and the mortal planets does suffer because of this. There's very little, I think what the main problem is, there's very little in the way of backgrounds for these stages. And I think that maybe would have been a good way to diversify a little here without it requiring too much from the development team. Overall for graphics, I do like what we have here. It's unique, that's for sure. It's great to see them take a stylistic kind of leap of faith and I think it's definitely paid off. Okay, so being a Souls-like, what truly matters here is, of course, gameplay. With a broken combat system or controls, this would very quickly become an easy, easy pass. Fortunately, I'm happy to say that's not the case. First off, I was surprised at how well the Souls-like, you know, challenging combat worked in this view style. Similar to Souls, what we get here, though, is a challenging combat, single spawn points to Immortal Planet's variation of the bonfires from Dark Souls. And when you die, experience points are lost and you're gonna need to make your way back there to collect them. Like any title in the genre, basically expect to die a lot. With that though, this would only be a true Souls-like title if it gave you an opportunity to grow as a warrior and give you full control during combat. And that is thankfully the case here with a few little issues. First of all, each battle rewards you with experience and this can be spent then to level up your character. So strength, agility, endurance, willpower, and so on, the kind of typical traits. Each manipulating your character just very slightly to keep that progression going. I will say I do wish some of these were a little bit more apparent when you apply them. Agility to me, for example, it never really felt like it did too much and it could have done with a little more fine tuning and a little bit more of a recognizable response to make you feel like you're actually growing. It's just, you know, be a bit more aggressive, show that impact, show the impact it's making. Now, when it comes to combat, you should not be surprised what we get here. If you've played a Souls like before is, well, tough, put it that way. Combat, it's methodical. This is not running, hack and slash and move on. This is strategic. Here, both you and your enemies are accompanied with stanima bars. The orange one in the top left, you see there. Every action you take, so attack, you know, roll, dodge, dash, defend, it eats up this bar. So here, you're managing this as you combat your foes. Keep that stamina in place and you can even use a special attack by switching your weapons between the two available attacks for every single one in this game, awakened and unawakened. Interestingly though, seeing your enemy stamina by adds a whole nother 
level to strategy that I've not seen before. And monitoring this now becomes a huge factor for every battle you enter. You know, those small enemies might have a tiny little bar and it's easy to beat them. But when it comes to those boss battles, be wary and be ready for huge attacks. And this is a way to identify that. Finally, when it comes to weapons, expect everything from swords to guns. It's a nice little selection of attack options here, that's for sure. Now I will say not everything is perfect, unfortunately. First of all, the movement just doesn't always feel responsive enough here and it really lets the game down. It's kind of, you know, it's slow, but it's also sluggish for the controls. It's kind of weird, but it just never really felt like I had 100% control over my character. And then the movement of your enemies too, you know, trying to dodge enemies, trying to understand the next movement. It's very difficult here because there's very little in the way of animation. You know, this is in the obvious windups with swords, you get to see like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, for example. This here, it, it's basically a frame of action of him swinging back and then he attacks. It's a case of, unfortunately, style over substance where they let their, their art idea go just a little bit too far. The movement as well, it just feels kind of slow and clunky. I got used to it, but this could have done with a bit more work to match the precise movements needed. You know, a little bit more speed would have definitely been appreciated here. Okay, so last up, Let's talk audio. What we have here, I do like for the majority. The music's, of course, suitably mystical. It's got hints of electronic in there, and would you expect any less? It's pretty much every game right now, but it works well with the stylistic choices the game's made. When it comes to sound effects, it's not quite as good, it's not bad, but it's, it's just all a little bit weak, to be honest, especially on the attack front. Swords, guns, they just don't quite sit right with the music to me. It didn't have the, the power I expected, and the worlds and the environments themselves, so there's, there's not much going on here. Overall, it's not bad, but it's far from perfect. Okay, so the final verdict, Mortal Planet is a Souls-like that does a lot of things right. Unique visuals, a new few point for the shine rate in that isometric view. Gameplay that is, for the most part, fair but challenging with a huge focus on almost stamina management. Unfortunately though, not all is perfect here with this one and it's let down in those two key areas. Repetitive visuals, you're gonna be dying a lot and replaying a lot of areas. So they really needed a bit more variance in there to keep the player engaged. And then the clunky movement and combat controls, which spills over unfortunately into the graphical front of the game as well. It requires precision, it's just too difficult to understand attacks from enemies. And that's not down to the player's skill, that's down to trying to read how the design's been implemented here. Overall, if I was rating this on visuals, on style, on ideas, I'd actually be giving this probably a seven or eight out of 10. Unfortunately for me though, two major areas really let it down and with that in mind, Today we're awarding Immortal Planet, an above average 6 out of 10, but this one it's got a steep learning curve when you're going to be battling against its stylistic decisions, and they just took it too far and it hurt the core gameplay. So what do you think? Will you be picking this one up? Hit subscribe, hit like, let me know in the comments below what you think, what are your thoughts, am I being fair, have I been unfair? Let's talk about it. I'll see you all on the next Gaming X.